Dr. Kevin Cavanaugh, he is a retired physician, ENT, and also the founder of HealthWatch USA. Good morning, Doc. Uh, good morning, Jack. Well, what's happened over the weekend? Seems like you, you, you wait two hours and you're already behind. What, what is happening with the coronavirus this weekend? Well, two major things. One is there's a realization that this virus isn't just a lung virus. It's also a heart, kidney, and brain virus. And the heart disease is what's really starting to be talked about. And there's been a number of articles out, number of op-eds, number of news reports that indicate that heart involvement, even in those that are very mildly sick, can be significant and can be common. We're talking over 50% of patients that have COVID. And this isn't just people that are hospitalized. There's a new study out of Germany which shows up to 60% of individuals that have COVID have ongoing myocardial inflammation or heart involvement. And this is very concerning. And, and also a number of reports have indicated that this is the main reason why sports are not getting up and running. It's not the fear of death in the young individuals and the athletes, it's the fear of heart disease. And unfortunately, kidney involvement is even more common and lung involvement is even more common than that. So this is a very serious virus. And so we need to stop kind of poo-pooing it and saying, well, there's nothing that uh, you know we really need to do because you'll get infected anyways and it's just like the flu. No, this is something we really do need to confront and take it seriously like the countries in Europe have and the countries in Southeast Asia have. So this is, I think, the number one message. The other message which is starting to come about, and that is the number of deaths. And there have been a number of new studies out about that. And as you know, some months ago, we've talked about how the death counts were hard to get standardized data and that we would probably have studies coming out showing excess deaths based upon historical data. And we're starting to see those studies coming out now. The numbers from the CDC indicate that we've had, from March 15th to August 1st, 200,000 excess deaths. And these deaths are mainly attributed to COVID. Now, granted, some of those could be you know, collateral damage from people who couldn't go into the hospital because they had a heart attack. On the other hand, there could also be collateral benefit from, for example, not getting the flu. The, the flu just died after about March and April in our country. That was pretty unusual too, wasn't it, for it to just die like that? Yes, it was. And they've also seen that in the Southern Hemisphere. If you go on the World Healthcare Organization site and look at the flu samples that are submitted from the Southern Hemisphere, again, after March, April, there's nothing. And usually it's the summer months in the Southern Hemisphere that have such a huge rise in cases. And this is because they're following mass guidance. And so it's very frustrating what's going to happen to us in the fall if we follow good social distancing and guidance with wearing masks. We'll probably see the same thing where we don't experience flu, but we're still battling COVID. On the other hand, if we continue on the course of not doing social distancing, gathering at parties, and pretty much ignoring advice, we may see an upsurgence in flu. The bad thing is, and no one's talked about this, is if this happens in the United States, and they don't have cases in the Southern Hemisphere, we may not have good guidance on how to make an effective flu vaccine. And I say effective with quotation marks around it, because as you know, it was never 100% effective, Usually if it was above 50%, we were happy. Well, it's going to be even harder to do that now. So if we follow good public health advice, I think we can really snuff out the flu because it's not as infectious as COVID and masks and social distancing should have a good impact on that. When should you get a flu shot? I would get a flu shot myself as soon as it's available, usually around the latter part of September. And I think that would be key. But as I said before, they may be a little bit delayed in availability because it's going to be harder for them to figure out exactly what antigens should be in that shot. 
Tell us about the San Quentin uh, report. Well, that's very interesting. And this has a number of lessons. There is about 3,200 inmates at San Quentin. And remember, inmates are pretty buff individuals. There's not too many obese inmates. There can be some, but they're usually pumping iron. And obesity, you know, is the number one comorbidity and risk factor for severe COVID. COVID-19 just went throughout San Quentin like you couldn't believe. 2,200 cases out of 3,200 individuals, and they still had not achieved herd immunity which is really upsetting because some people were hoping that people weren't as susceptible to it kind of innately. Well, that, that doesn't look like that's the case. And their overall fatality rate, despite having a lower rate of obesity, when adjusted for the current profile of America, is 0.77%. And that's with advances in our treatment. So the case fatality rate is high. The infectivity of this virus is out the roof. And that's what makes it so lethal. You know, when I hear people with school children, well, they're not as likely to die. They're talking about the case fatality rate. When you look at the infectivity rate, in other words, they're much more likely to get infected. The overall deaths and disability may be unacceptably high. In fact, I fear that they're going to be. And so that is something we really need to keep in mind. And then on top of that, we're not sure at all that this virus is going to confer good immunity and both population studies and antibody studies in individuals indicate that immunity will wane very rapidly, especially in those who are asymptomatic, which is what childhood infections usually are. So the children may be set up to spread it and they may be set up to get the infection again and again. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. Unfortunately, we are entering into a great American experiment with our children in many of our cities. And to me, I think that that is really cavalier and kind of taking a risk that we probably shouldn't have taken. Okay, Dr. Kevin Cavanaugh, thanks.